možemo da postavimo osnovno pitanje. Ako se tolikva panika digla oko GameSoy i kod nas i u svetu, da li je GameSoy zbog nečega loša? Ozbiljna diskusija se kod nas nikad nije povela o tome, a sve i da jeste pitanje da li bi imao ko da je vodi, ako imamo u vidu da je Srbija makar formalno jedna od najzaostalih zemalja u biotehnologijama i genskom inženjeringu, ako ga uopšte ima. Dakle, možda je štetna, možda nije. Ali kako god, nedavno je kod nas gostovala doktorka Martina Njuven McLockan sa Kalifornijskog univerziteta, čije služe specijalnost biotehnologije i naravno pokušala je da objasni svoju stranu medalje o tome šta to dobro genetski organizmi mogu da nam donesu. Njena predavanje u Srbiji je finansirala američka ambasada u okviru svojih akademskih programa. Pa dakle, za lajke. Evo par objašnjenja o tome šta je zapravo gen soja. To je biljka soje koji je ugrađen gen koji je čini otpornim na glifosat, herbicid koji se koristi još od 70. godina. Potvrdnjama Monsanta, kompanija koja je izmislila jednu i drugu stvar, i Roundup i soju, odnosno glifosate, ne postoje ništa drugo što je genetski modifikovan ulje, protein, vitamini, sve istog sastava kao i kod ne GM soje. Dakle, da čujem argumente šta genetski modifikovane biljke mogu dobro da donesu. Biotehnologi je jedna od sveća učinja koja će učiniti farmerima da će učiniti svoje učinje 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 are both, mostly being modified for what's called input or agronomic traits. So this is mostly for pest resistance, disease resistance, herbicide tolerance. And what it has allowed farmers to do is to grow their crops while minimizing the amount of actual synthetic chemicals that they need to grow these crops. In fact, it's estimated over the last 10 years that ha there has been a reduction of about 15% in the a physical pesticide footprint that farmers would normally have had if they were to grow these crops using synthetic chemicals as opposed to using a DNA-based approach. The other real positive uh, from an environmental impact has been a reduction in the amount of carbon dioxide. So agriculture, rather sadly, it's one of the uh, areas that really contribute to the production of greenhouse gases. Now, of course, we're trying to reduce greenhouse gases so that we can grow our crops while not contributing to global warming. So, because herbicide tolerance has allowed farmers to switch to what's called no-till agriculture, it means that they're no longer plowing into the surface, so they're no longer opening up the soil to erosion, so carbon dioxide is sequestered. Also, because you're not driving back and over, you're not compacting the soil, so you have less oxidation, the organic matter in the soil is much healthier. A lot of beneficial insects and earthworms are coming back into these soils. And of course, you're not using fossil fuels and you're greatly reducing the amount of water that's needed to grow these crops. It's very large uh, in, in the US. You're looking at about 90%, especially of the soybeans. Some areas it's up to 95%. BT corn a little less, but all over the world, throughout the world, there are now 134 million hectares of biotech crops grown. Rather interestingly, of the 14 million farmers that grow these crops, 13 million are from less developed countries. Not big farmers from North America, but actually small resource poor farmers in less developed countries. So they are really seeing the advantage of growing these crops. To them the biggest advantage is basically bottom line cost. They don't have to buy chemicals to grow their crops and their yield is increasing because they're not losing their crops to pests and diseases. So uh, US has physically more acres because we've got large industrial farms, but we have physically more farmers in, in all the other countries and especially South America. America, India, China, large amount of farmers are starting to adapt this technology. Dobro, a šta je sa argumentima druge strane? Mada nijedan izveštaj nije valjano dokumentovan, odnosno sve možete da nađete kao manje formalne studije po internetu i časopisima za lepotu i zdravlje, to je da iskrana gen sojom dovodi do recimo povećanja embrionalne smrtnosti pacova, da su novorađeni pacovi hranjeni gen sojom manje teški pri rađenju i sl. Dakle, da li postoje neke posljedice po ljudsko zdravlje? So, so these foods have been in broad-based uh, production since 1996, so f basically 14 years. Uh, we have literally millions upon millions of people who have eaten these products and there's been no adverse effects. Now, that's not very scientific, of course, but we've done the science as well. In fact, 
we have we more thoroughly study and regulate these crops than any crops ever in the history of agriculture so i talked about these older technologies like irradiation mutagenesis there's a bunch of others as well they're not regulated at all they're generally regarded as safe with biotech you are at least seven to ten years of research going through the uh, usda the animal plant health inspection service the Food and Drug Administration and the Environmental Protection Association, they all examine these uh, products. For example, the soybeans I talked about. There was 1,800 separate analysis steps taken before any of those were approved for commercialization. We've done extensive feeding studies. Uh, we've done extremely uh, uh, extensive molecular analysis, uh, nutrition analysis, safety analysis, environmental impact analysis, looking at the impact on non-target organisms, uh, looking at the potential for weediness. Some of the most extensive studies was done by the European Union. So some years ago, um, 400 teams from across the original 15 countries of the EU did a retrospective analysis over 15 years and determined, because scientists have a much better notion of what they're doing using biotech, and because it is so highly regulated, that these crops are safer than any other mechanism of producing crops that we have today in production agriculture. Na kraju šta god je istina može da se utvrdi, mi imamo tolike klinike, institute, doktore nauka, magistre i akademike, štancujemo kao na traci, valjda i oni znaju nešto da provere i izračunaju, valjda. I osta ipak glavno pitanje, sve da utvrdimo jedno ili drugo, bilo da je GM soja štetna ili nije, zašto uvozimo sve proizvode od GM soje, a sa druge strane, zašto se većina ne GMO proizvoda iz Srbije zapravo izvozi. Mi hranimo našu stokom GM organizijama iz Brazila, sami uzgajamo ne GM, ali ih ne koristimo, nego ih prodajemo. Na kraju, kao je u svakoj priči, samo su pare u pitanju, ali hajde da smislimo kako da ih pravedno podelimo.